Welcome to the New Heights Show on Education. I'm Pamela Clark, founder and director of the New Heights Educational Group, and I'm here with David Smith, the founder of Silicon Valley High School, who has helped us get these podcasts produced and delivered to you. Yes, Pamela, when we saw the great things that you and your army of volunteers were achieving at New Heights, we wanted to get involved. We're happy to work with you to leverage the internet and make quality education accessible and affordable to everyone, everywhere. Thank you, David. We appreciate Silicon Valley High School helping us to get these podcasts out to the hundreds of thousands of listeners from all over the world. So I hope you enjoy the show. In this week's episode, we will discuss education reform on mission. Hello, everyone. This is Danielle Washington coming to you live from Ms. Buffy Williams' office. <laughs> Just sitting around thinking about life and trying to become better people tonight, so check us out. Welcome back. You're on the air with Buffy Williams, and you have been listening to the New Heights Show on Education. We have been discussing the show's purpose on mission. Good evening. This is your host, Buffy Williams, and you're listening to the New Heights Educational Group, the New Heights Show on Education. Tonight's topic is from learning commons, from libraries to learning commons, part two. A recap on last week's show, we discussed federal TRIO programs from the inside out. On tonight's episode, we reimagine libraries as they transition into learning commons. So join us in the conversation. Call us at 917-948-7542 or drop your comments in the chat or tag us on social media using the hashtag NHEG or post your comments on Twitter at Buffy underscore Awaken or on Spreaker, Instagram, or YouTube. Remember my fellow New Heights host Erica Hansen's show airs on Thursdays at 2 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. On tonight's episode, I have three resources and they come from Carolyn Masser, the Department of Education and the Regional Learning Consortium. When we spoke about Learning Commons in part one of Learning Commons from Libraries to Learning Commons, I spoke about how traditionally we have thought about libraries. And this is not a new concept. We're in 2020 now. But this Learning Commons um, theme or transition has been taking place for a number of years, at least since 2012, 2013. And in looking at what we traditionally talk about when we talk about libraries, we think about the technology policy um, Common, the Learning Commons policy that was established in 2004, and then, of course, literacy and competencies as it relates to reading, and then thinking also about the new careers and technology foundations because maker spaces are a part of that Learning Commons area. And that's simply where students are using their hands to make things that correlate with other different subjects, maybe like physics or mathematics, and kind of bringing those spaces together and thinking about technology and how they can branch off from that and actually create something different, um, hands-on, that could also be um, a technical skill for them. And then also thinking about how high schools can redesign the way that they look at libraries. And if you're definitely my age, you remember card catalogs, you know, going into the library, you know, getting your assignment from your teacher or thinking about a new book that you wanted to read. And you would go to this card catalog and pull out the pull out the drawer and kind of go alphabetically and look through and thumb through depending on what your subject was to find the card, to find out what was the number or the location for the book in the library. And 
you know, libraries were always quiet spaces for people to kind of go into a quiet setting, get some work done, maybe check out a book, you know, using the card catalog. All of them were pretty standard. They had wooden tables, wooden chairs. And also they had video cassettes and film strips that you could check out and definitely spaces for teachers to go and utilize an area and maybe do um, things or cut out letters for making bulletin boards and things like that. And so traditionally when we think about what a library was for us, it was it was utilized as an information hub and it's also going to be as it transitions to Learning Commons, still an information hub that is just a reimagined and redesigned for schools. But now, instead of card catalogs, we're looking at portable uh, mobile devices and unlimited amounts of technology, utilizing, um, of course, Wi-Fi within a particular area of a school, um, definitely within the Library Commons area, but also having a multi-mix use of the space and the space's function as it relates to education and how students really think about that concept. And so a learning common is an inclusive, flexible space um, that that uses a learner-centered approach. Um, it's both physical and it's virtual and thinking about the collaboration and inquiry and imagination to expand a deeper learning for students. And essentially, you know, that inclusive, flexible space we talked about before is an inclusive space, not only for students, but also for teachers to utilize the um, library staff in working with them on whatever curriculum that they are working on to see if there's some type of tie-in that they could actually utilize from the multimedia space or multi-use space within the library commons and integrating those two together and that in turn they're hoping has a greater sense of uh, retention for the student or retaining of information as it relates to whatever subject they're they're given for that day and so when we give up our concept of what we feel or what we think a library should be, it's kind of difficult sometimes to let go of our current competencies and to understand that this is something that's going to be totally reimagined. And even for teachers, it's a different space. It's it's not what you traditionally know. So there's going to be a slight learning curve where everyone is kind of breaking down their notion of what they traditionally thought of as the library learning space and just reimagining that space as it relates to your particular school and what's going to best work for your learners and the way that your system is set up. And so each school has an opportunity to kind of reimagine that space, um, hopefully along with um, their staff, to see what is going to be the best solution or the best workaround for students to be able to have these flexible spaces that are, again, physical and virtual because they have access to all this technology to collaborate with their classmates on different projects and then learn different ways of thinking about um, their lesson or their subject in a deeper and more meaningful way. And also a more tangible way using the maker spaces. And so we are discussing um, learning commons today, but we're also thinking about reimagining the space for libraries within your school and depending on your grade level. And also uh, learner spaces or learning commons are also more bright areas. Um, Traditionally, when you go to a library, you know, it's more of a monotone theme. Um, throughout the library of a traditional library. But Learning Commons, when you think about them and you imagine them much more bright in color, um, 
the furniture is brighter um, I would say like neon greens and reds and you know very deep blues and so it automatically stimulates you into a, a different mode of thinking it's not so much a relaxed zone but more of an energized zone for students to be able to collaborate so immediately when you walk in you get a different feel than you would I would say per se walking into a traditional library because when you walk into a traditional library the tones are very calming and it's a calming space but we talked about on part one that when you walk into a multimedia space there is allowable uh, a sensible amount of noise i would say a sensible amount of noise within it because people are collaborating students and teachers are collaborating on different projects in different areas and different segments of the library and so while it's not necessarily a free-for-all when you go there there is definitely noise above the level of a whisper <laughs> from what we traditionally think about when we think about uh, libraries so again today we're talking about part two of our a lot from libraries to learning commons and I want to thank you for joining us on tonight's show and at this point we're going to take a short break and we'll be back after the break. Right now you might be struggling through your classes or even failing them. You might be worried that you may not finish high school. There might have even been a thought that you may not be smart enough. Well the New Heights Educational Group begs to differ. We not only think you are smart enough but with our help you will complete your high school diploma. The New Heights Educational Group strives to improve your academic success through its tutoring services. To learn more, please visit newheightseducation.org and contact us. New Heights Educational Group, educational resources to help reach your goals. This podcast is brought to you by Silicon Valley High School, the world's fastest growing, video-based, self-paced, teacher-supported, fully accredited online school that's recommended by more than 96% of students. Take individual courses at just $95 each or earn your high school diploma at any age. Check us out at svhs.co. Welcome back. This is your host, Buffy Williams, and you're listening to the New Heights Educational Group, the New Heights Show on Education. And tonight's topic is from Learning Commons, from Libraries to Learning Commons, Part 2. And as you can see, I'm already trans trying to transition my mind to Learning Commons first. But it's from Libraries to Learning Commons. And we were exploring before the break, you know, the look of libraries versus Learning Commons and just a visible... Um, look being different from what we traditionally think about when we look at libraries and we think about these flexible spaces for students it it, it involves a, a drastic um, mode of thinking and students are probably if you think about the the pace of education and the pace of at which students are using more and more technology and the the way that we are doing more virtual and more online teaching as far as the classroom is concerned, even in the K through 12 area. And I know that that may be somewhat difficult for some to kind of grasp, especially in the earlier years when we're talking about elementary or pre-K and how do we incorporate that, but also give them the skills that they need in order to be able to relate to each other directly. But we have to keep or in person, I would say, one on one. And so when we think about it, we have to also understand that students are putting these learning commons for the same purpose we were put into the space for libraries. But the only difference there is they're not necessarily in a particular study group to pass an exam. They're actually there to enhance the learning process as they go along the lessons and then hopefully be able to collaborate with each other in the at the end. And so they're there to gather this information from all of these multiple sources throughout using their technology and portable devices as well as the computers within the learning commons. And so once they gather all of that information, they're there to also examine the multiple perspectives with their group 
and then work collaboratively together to come up with um, creating either a digital presentation or problem solving techniques in a group. And so it uh, it forces them to think critically and to be able to um, voice their opinions and debate their issues in, um, a, a, in a space where it's safe um, for them to explore those options. And uh, remember that the teachers are there with them during this process. And so the teachers are the ones that set the parameters for examining these multiple perspectives that students need in order to ultimately come up with a collaborative um, framework for whatever lesson that they're working on. So transitioning um, in the 21st century to learning commons has been a way of connecting between research and students using this multi-use space and one of the segments um, from, from our sources uh, spoke about how the entire Library of Congress can fit into one shoebox digitally. And when you think about that, that opens up a world of opportunity and space. Because sometimes when we think about things, we, we think about things in such concrete ways that we don't really expand our thinking beyond that. When you think about our Library of Congress, I know I... In thinking about it, think about this wealth of you know information in this massive building, and as far as the eye can see, you have all of these resources. But if in digitally, <laughs> you can conceptualize all of that knowledge being put into one shoebox, then what other, what are the worldwide possibilities of our students, and how much more can they be able to create? And we. We uh, have to also understand that, you know, this m mass generation of collaborative thinking among students is going to aid in a more flexible environment and for them to be able to collaborate with others in partnerships throughout the world. And these things can benefit them in multiple ways. And they can explore the benefits and of learning commons and the benefits of collaborating together. Um, within particular lessons, but also they can explore the challenges that they face. And teachers can, uh, in some way, evaluate what are the challenges that they're facing in utilizing this particular method, uh, as well as the benefits. Because with anything that we transition to, depending on your school setting, there are going to be multiple ways in which you can look at it. There, but But the biggest thing is that Hopefully, everyone will be involved with whatever model that the school decides to come up with and provide some type of input as to how can, you know, the entire staff be involved in developing a learning common that best fits the needs of your particular school. And so some of the questions that you may ask yourself in looking at learning commons is... Uh, does the model provide a significant benefit to the student? Because ultimately, it's about the student benefit and the outcome. And so doing it just for the sake of doing it is not the purpose. The purpose is, you know, of course, how is it going to benefit the learning outcomes of the student? And also looking at the challenges that are going to be associated with using a learning commons model. And then what are the characteristics of that model? What things do we really want to um, be in that model and how is it going to benefit the students overall. And so these information hubs are designed to, again, create a space for increased knowledge, increased, increased collaboration. And yes, there will be some spaces within the learning commons that will be quiet spaces, but they're also a place where students can come and learn more about um, more about a particular subject and also um, they're no longer confined to a, a physical space, right? So students have the computers, they have the internet, and they can break down these, you know, invisible walls of imagination and open it up to a global society. And the students gain a greater opportunity to be able to 
personalize their experience and actually decipher these are the things that are going on in these other countries or in these other schools and having access to these distance resources can give them the extra help that they need to be for the curriculum to be a little bit more challenging and engaging for the students in, in a very unique way. And what we have been talking about with the show um, from its inception is equipping our students in a way that when they go out into the world, they make the world a better place. Um, through learning technologies and new and inventive ways of educating students um, throughout the world. And so we want to support our schools in examining the multiple perspectives of learning commons and understanding that when we go into that environment, it will look very different. And it also allows the librarians and the specialists or media specialists that work within that area to be able to more closely work with the staff as it relates to whatever curriculum or learning objectives they have for that particular class. And so I want us to not only be, we're in a place where we're reimagining education in a virtual sense because our students are more than likely starting off their school year this year in a virtual format. Um, and learning commons is if we get back to the brick and mortar situation and hopefully we will find a vaccine for COVID-19, we will go back into that environment. But by virtue of them being placed in this virtual learning setting, or hybrid model setting now going back into the school system, they have access to other resources and links that maybe in, when they started off in the school year last year that their teacher may not have explored before. And so now teachers, administrators, um, learning specialists, um, librarians, media specialists are all getting an opportunity to utilize every resource available within that virtual platform to be able to create a curriculum or a curriculum design or reimagine their curriculum design to best aid the student so that it's a learner-centered approach both physically and in a virtual space and allowing students and teachers and parents to collaborate on the best ways to be able to present that curriculum and Definitely, it's got to be a challenge, like I said, in the elementary school level or the pre-K level, you know, to keep students engaged, um, but it is doable. Um, so I've seen teachers do a lot of imaginative and creative things um, that we have been in a position to create new and innovative ways of reaching out to our students. And I have been very impressed by um, the way that they have done that, but I know that I do realize that it's still a very challenging thing to do um, in that transition from brick and mortar to uh, the, the physical space to going into a virtual space. And how do you make sure that everyone is appropriately resourced and also supported within those resources and not forgetting about our administrators who take on the heavier burden of ensuring that our children are safe in these environments, but also learning the things that they need in order to have a lockstep learning process or scaffolding learning process to be able to retain that information to move from grade level to grade level and persist along their educational framework um, with ease, hopefully, uh, as easy as possible. And so we don't we want to make sure that the learning gap is not increased by virtue of students not having access to um, technology and technological advances. So a lot of schools are providing families with um, with laptops or multiple port portable devices to be able to do their schoolwork. But also, um, we want to be sensitive to the fact that not everyone has access to Internet. And so these learning commons give students 
a way to be able to be on that level playing field because the technology is there, the internet is there, and hopefully we can get to a place where our students will go back to school. But until then, we have to deal with the um, the hand that we're dealt. And so I want to just thank you for listening to tonight's show on part two of Libraries to Learn in Commons. And I hope that on this episode that you gain a deeper insight into why Learning Commons uh, is a, a more progressive move from libraries and why we need to reimagine and redesign, redesign the information hubs that we have traditionally known as libraries and looking at transforming into a modern facility for um, integrating from research t- and students in a more collaborative way. I'm your host, Buffy Williams, and you've been listening to the New Heights Show on Education. We hope that you join us next week. That's our time, and you have been listening to the New Heights Show on Education. I'm your host, Buffy Williams. If you like what you've heard, search for us on your smart speaker and listen to us anytime. Thank you for listening. Good night. Until we meet again next Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as we discuss next week's topic. Enjoy expanded content from the New Heights Education Group hosts on Blog Talk, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and Watch No Run. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Don't forget to rate us and follow us on your podcast player. Check out our show page, radio.newheightseducation.org, for monthly announcements and other happenings.